this time of night. I presume it's night by now. The more my eyes have adjusted, the darker it seems to have gotten, like a perverse epiphany. Perverse as not only am I now near blind, but because the solitude has taught me nothing. I always had a fear that deep down my everyday desires were basic, and I'd be proven tragically correct. There is, quite literally, not a lot to see here. Which once again begs the question, why did you ask me here? If it's for entertainment, then I'm sorry to disappoint. But if it's punishment after, then I hope I can satisfy. When I say it's dark, I don't mean pitch black. My vision is a fuzzy monochrome, a static TV playing endless repeats of a show, a show about rock walls. I'm sure the darkest days are still to come, but for now, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. If I squint my eyes, I can make it out as a theatrical LED spotlight, conveniently placed for maximum atmospherics. It's a source of much minor distraction for me throughout the endless night as I cast silhouettes on the craggy wall. I tried casting distress calls with my tongue, but I had to go letter by letter, so by the time I got to any punchline, my prospective savior walking by would have been exhausted. D, D, E, 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 A, R, R, S, R, I, R, O, R, M, A, D, A, M, 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 W, O, U, I, U, D, U, O, 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 D, E, S, O, K, I, N, D, A, S, T, O, P, O, S, S, I, V, L, Y, L, Y, H, E, L, P, M, E, question mark. I created a code to streamline my pleas. I had a lot of time to kill, so it's very complex. It's a series of interconnected tongue movements in constructed Latin with all consonants removed for brevity and intrigue. The tongue is a strange instrument with expressive capabilities I've yet to fully master. A lumpen brain contorting itself like an excitable pet in the prison of my jaw. One day, when my slang becomes rich enough, then I will emancipate it, let it slither off out of the cave to educate the heathen with new language. But until that day comes, I will continuously cry for help. A. 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 A E A E A A A A O O O U U O O O E E O E O E. I can't imagine anyone will crack my code in time to save me, but I live in hope that when they do, my genius will finally be will finally be understood. When you're faced with a predicament like mine, posthumous superiority is all you have left. The little things matter. It's hard to say whether I lost the plot or if there ever even was one. My life thus far hardly seems worthy of the cinematic treatment, and this ending is avant-garde to the point of debatable artistic worth. 
If a torture scene is so long that it bores an audience into apathy, is it even a tragedy anymore? It can't be a parable, as I've never had a moral inclination in my life. And it's certainly not a comedy. The time is completely off. Just, just, to clarify, this is an inner monologue. I lost my voice long ago, around the same time I lost my legs and body. In fact, it was at the exact same time. Once my head was severed from my body, my vocal cords could only let out stock horror movie sound effects, and I used up that repertoire within a week or so. I Wilhelm screamed into the cave until my voice turned into static and finally disappeared altogether. Months later, those very screams came rebounding back and they haven't stopped since. Each day, more and more screams return to procreate with the others. I am surrounded by a cacophony of my own creation. All of which must seem terrible to you. But frankly, I've always liked the sound of my own voice. It's a much needed reminder of my physical existence, which really took a blow after the decapitation. To clarify further, I am a beheaded fox rotating slowly on a spit above a fire long extinguished in a cave long forgotten. I sometimes worry that this cave is actually a metaphorical one, but then I breathe in the dusty air and feel the sooty particles secrete through the bloody gore of my neck, and I remember this is real. This is the joy of living. O E U E E A I remember when the fire went out and the cold set in. My fur started to freeze up in small spiked ringlets and the air I breathed out plumed like smoke before settling as a thick fog on the ashen floor. I remember when the dizziness ended and the spinning became the status quo. A sudden click, and it was as if I was aligned with the entire globe. It was as if it had always been like this, a fact as physical as gravity. Except now, the world was a blur, and my life was directionless. Round and round, finale and encore. Ice age, big band, relapse, reprise. Night. It must be night. Night is the only time of narrative importance, and the only importance left here is my narrative. After decades, you tend not to focus on the superficial. Fashion comes and goes, autumn, winter, spring, and summer are all the same. My only semblance of time is Bird. Bird flies in here every day to deliver me an update on the state of events outside the cave. <laughs> Local politician resigns amongst sodomy speculation. I used to try desperately to communicate with my tongue shadow technique, but never to any avail. It's either too slow for a creature always on the move, or too slow for one with a brain smaller than my meiotic pupils. 20th of November. 
Peter found dead at the hands of tweens. I don't know why Bert swings by. I didn't care for world events out there, and I certainly don't in here. It's hard to care for others suffering when your own is infinitely superior. I suppose there's some joy to be found in populist gloom babble. It's very quaint in its naivety. That of me, we deal with the greatness of the sum of the parts and unanimously agree to never attempt such a foolish feat again. Oh, can the poetics foul. You never converse with me, gull. You might as well be a floater in the corner of my eyeballs, a daily irritant feeding clickbait to an entirely disconnected soul. Don't get me wrong, I know my suffering is relative, but I have no sense of that relativity. I am a solipsistic being and my subjectivity knows nothing else. I could feign modesty, but that would be disingenuous. As far as I'm concerned, my pain transcends all and others and that's that. This is my get out clause, my escape rope, my only stability, my only comfort. Don't try and guilt me with the headlines of a world I know nothing of. Of course, there once was a world I knew of. I would roam streets searching for discarded scraps of human sustenance. I like Doritos most, but would take whatever the two-legged ones discarded. Leathery feasts of cardboard, wine gum, chicken bone, cellophane, lithium battery, Bible, soil, potato, USB cord, Glass shard. Special K. I ingested humanity, and every time I devoured something new, I learned a little more. New tastes, new textures, new ways to be. Soon I was walking on two legs, masturbating, shampooing, and conditioning. I was conversing with man as equal, instigating casual chit-chat about the topics of the day. Immigration policy, Spotify, bee decline. My appetite started increasing. I was binging Parliament, the entertainment industry, coal supplies. My knowledge was growing as exponentially as my enemies, and thus, I found my ballooning hulk of fur being rolled into the mouth of this here cave. I lay on my back for days, cushioned into the cavern, like a child being forcibly submerged by a bully in a swimming pool. I remained motionless as my mind ran stadium-sized laps of human gobbledygook. Then gradually, I deflated as my gut gnawed at itself, and my thoughts numbed into sweet, dumb nothingness. I craved the dust-swept tips of a freshly strewn pack of blazing jalapeno. But most of all, I miss the company of my saboteurs. Now, I am no longer hungry. One of the side effects of my apparent immortality. And my stupefied brain has no thirst for human mundanities. Mundanities. I, R, U, I, I, E, I, two, O, two, one, two, one, two, one, I, U, I, I, 
It's deeply unsatisfying having no ending, but thank God there's no audience. Who knows, perhaps they claim to enjoy it. Marveling over my accidental commitment to a singular performative gesture as their skeletons lay rotting. Who knows? Perhaps Bird will hear my ramblings and deliver them to the other side. <laughs> Imagine Bird cawing down over the sand swept hills of East Anglia to local mili militia. <coughs> A ragtag ensemble of geriatric boomers cosplaying as Tuscan Raiders look up, perplexed. Little do they know they've heard the calling from a pathetic, good-for-nothing god. I made, I made that, that bit up. The bit before. About getting fat and rolling in here. I don't know who I'm kidding, certainly not you. We all know I'd never let myself go like that. The truth of the matter is, I walked in here on my own volition, trotted in on all fours without so much as a single witness, sealed the mouth of the cave up with reams of gaffer and set up the perfect spotlight to cast a perfect silhouette on a perfect murder. Life had got tough and I was too scaredy to face the void of another tomorrow. When I chopped off my head, I was after closure but was tragically burdened with a new lease of life. Death had always struck me as a good opportunity, for there is no other practice which so intensifies living. Without it, life is insipid. You might as well live on the white of eggs. Alas, the timing was all off, and my story rolled on, leaving a trail of blood and guts in my wake. I tried hacking away at the other body parts to see if that would help matters. I'd always felt bad for my legs, carrying around my lazy hunk of meat, so they were the first to go. They ran off without hesitance, galloping away like freedom wasn't an illusion. And I felt a pang of sadness, pride, and joy, but mostly pain. Next was the cock, that was tough. It had got me through many a long, hard night, but ejaculation is for the emancipated, and I had to remain devout to my storybook fatalism. As the blade slashed open my hard member, the blood and semen formed into a pink yolk. I think I saw God, and he was definitely a man. Finally, the torso. I did the deed and never looked back, because now it was a head. A head on the floor of a cave, refusing to die, congealing into eternity. A rotten egg reborn in the pool of my own blood. I feel them sometimes. My phantom legs. Walking in obedience to their muscle memories. My phantom cock, failing to weep. Low yearning for my phantom palm. My phantom heart, lusting after my refined intellect and critical distance. And my phantom tail, patiently wagging, waiting to be reunited. Good boy. Good boy. Stay there, boy. That's a good boy. Bird flies in again. Why are you just here? I thought I told you to leave. Come on! Both of 
costume. It's so all gone. gone. All of it. Bird looks at me intently. What do you mean, all of it? Bird keeps staring. You mean they finally reached tipping point? Nothing. Well, I'm sure that's very upsetting for the last five of them left. As for me and the bees, we're rejoicing. Bird coughs a splutter of green bile. Holds up one towel onto the spotlight as if to tell me to fuck off, then falls to the ground dead. Not you as well. The spotlight starts flickering. As if the shadowy spirit of Bird is trying to make an exit. Bad luck, pigeon. This is the afterlife, too. Fearing this might be my last opportunity, I write out a final call. I. A. E. The spotlight lets out a final gasp and says goodnight. Pitch black. Huh. So this is true darkness. Something like how I imagined death, but without the satisfaction. A sudden jolt and I can feel my tail again, wagging away in some distant climb. The desert, presumably. It must all be desert now. Good boy. Here, boy. Come here, boy. No need to be afraid. No, no, boy. Come back here, boy. Right this instance. It was I who freed you. I deserve respect. I deserve affection. You were like my last hope. I've been cursed from the start. It wasn't my fault that you were born into the life of servitude towards such a pathetic excuse for a mammal. Deep down, you and me are the same. Good boys. Good boys whose integrity was compromised at birth. Ah. Oh. So this is true darkness. Pitch black. I can't hold focus between the constant screaming, phantom waggings, and squawks of inane genocides. It's time to take hold of the rudder and steer this ship. I must scream loudly and clear, proclaim my truth, finish my journey. But what is my essential being if I'm already chopped in half? Do I have a soul? I think I have a voice. Well, not quite a voice, but I have thoughts. I have lots of them. I think, therefore, I am. Do I? Do I think that is? All the thoughts are getting muddied in glorious browns. I can't quite tell the difference between asleep and awake in the perpetual dark. I live in constant dreams. I dream of a great deluge coming to wash me away, sins intact. I take an egg, I smash it on my head, and the yolk dribbles made up colors. I am inside the shell, floating away, led by the wind of my rebounding screams. I rip my tongue out to use as a rudder, and it spells out sentences I no longer understand myself. I am transported back into the new world. No, no, stop it. I made it all up. The bit before about killing myself, the children, the swimming pools, the Doritos. The truth is, I'm not even here. I'm out there in the desert, gasping at the hot air, hallucinating even worse scenarios for final comfort. Yes, that's it. That's the twist. But then, why is my neck so sore? The wounds have congealed, but it still burns harder than is describable by tongue. 
no, 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 series of meaningless events, but my obituary will give my life the structure it has thus far lacked. They say history is written by the victors, but I'm the biggest loser, baby, and I'm going to write my masterpiece and outlive them all, forever and ever, in eternal irrelevancy. Here's what I'll do. I'll create a story, a little story, a story within a story, like all the greats. It'll be about what I know. I won't spare the bloody details. It'll be melodramatic, worthy and elegant all at once. The audience will relate to it. They will find the protagonist charming and likable. And when it's over, it will be a small victory. The story of the lonely little fox in a cave trying to defeat the Eternal. My obituary by me. Okay. There's no way to end this. I'm done. I mean, I've been done ad infinitum. But now I'm done done. And if I'm done, then it's over. Because I say so. And it is so.